How's it going, guys? We have a hyper pass level neuro question, okay? Some of you will not be entertained enough. That's fine. There are many of you who just need to fucking pass. So we're covering the basics here. Not going to be a lengthy clip. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. The links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. And I'll start the clip. So 24-year-old man, he has trauma to his head somehow, and he's brought into hospital, okay? And then we have this non-contrast CT of the head performed. Now, as I just fucking prefaced with, we're covering hyper basics here. When you look at the CT and you say, well, no idea what I'm looking at. Well, over here on the left side of the image, the patient's right, we have what appears to be a biconvex lens appearing bleed. Okay, you say there's also uh, what appears to be a hyperopacity, uh, this small white area here. You say, what's that? No fucking idea. All right, it's just there. So if we look at this actual main bleed, it's a biconvex lens. Well, isn't that consistent with an epidural hematoma, right? If we had a subdural hematoma, then we would have a crescent shaped, a crescent moon appearing bleed. All right, so this is an epidural hematoma classically associated with a lucid interval, which nothing about that here, okay? Nothing about it, but they can say that a patient hits his or her head, loses consciousness for 15 minutes, uh, wakes back up and then says, no, don't call the ambulance. I'm perfectly fine. That's your lucid interval. Okay. They, uh, they appear lucid. They're totally fine. Quote unquote, after they had lost consciousness for 10, 15 minutes, and then they go home, they go, they go to sleep and they die because they have this epidural hematoma here. So they're asking what's bleeding in the setting of uh, an epidural hematoma. The answer is middle meningeal artery. Okay. It's what you need to know. It's a fast bleed. You are going to do on 2CK when they ask you for next best step in management, you're going to do intubation and hyperventilation as the next step. Okay? Especially when you have a decreased Glasgow coma scale, you want to decrease intracranial pressure because decreased CO2 causes decreased cerebral perfusion, decreases ICP. So intubation, hyperventilation is next best step. If it's not listed, you're going to choose craniotomy. Okay, I've never seen burr hole as a correct answer. Sometimes it floats around as a distractor, but presumably a burr hole is uh, similar enough to a craniotomy. Okay, now if a patient has a bleed that where there's no loose interval, if they give you an elderly patient, alcoholic, classically, uh, sometimes patients who have deceleration injury, car accident, where they don't lose consciousness at subdural, okay, that would be bridging veins. Okay, very buzzy or superior cerebral veins. Also, shaken baby syndrome can cause subdural hematoma. Now, you can do craniotomy as well. This Subdural is a little bit tricky because uh, craniotomy can be an answer, but you need to know uh, in, in, cer in certain circumstances where the patient has a normal GCS, appears very stable, the vignette, you're reading it, it's like patient's perfectly fine, essentially, but just has this subdural, this small subdural, you can observe in select circumstances, okay? So as I said before, epidural, you're going to do intubation hyperventilation. If uh, if it's listed, if it's not, you're going to do craniotomy slash burr hole. For subdural, you're going to do craniotomy. But if the patient uh, is relatively fine, as you're reading in the vignette, you're going to just choose observation. Now, Real quick, you can just be aware that lenticulostriate artery, uh, this could be involved in hypertensive strokes. It's yieldness exceedingly low. I mean, you'll come across in resources this notion of lipohyalinosis that can lead to uh, lacunar infarcts, uh, charco bouchard aneurysms, okay, fancy uh, sounding terminology. But in terms of actual practical yieldness, essentially non existent, okay, but just hypertensive strokes if one of these ruptures. Uh, posterior cerebral artery. Um, I mean, this posterior infarct could cause uh, a contralateral homonymous hemianopia with macular sparing. That's when you have your uh, occipital lobe infarct, okay? And also, weirdly, this can cause uh, something referred to as prosopognosia, which is inability to recognize faces. This isn't me trying to be fancy. This is on uh, a 2CK and BME exam. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel.
and I appreciate your time. That's it.